The story so far. Agent 47 and his handler, Diana Burnwood, are the world's top assassins working for the ICA. When all of their recent missions turn out to be contracts for a shadow client, things take an unexpected turn. All their targets have been operatives in an invisible organization known as Providence. Providence has infiltrated the highest echelons of power and secretly owns our world. The Shadow Client wages a silent war against them. And so the Constant, Providence's enigmatic controller, seeks Diana out. His request, track down and eliminate the Shadow Client. In return, he offers something irresistible. The truth of 47's lost origins. Neither know that the man they hunt is 47's childhood friend. And unlike 47, he remembers everything. is just up the beach. Our intel indicates that she and her team are laying low, most likely planning the militia's next strike. Reynard is one of the Shadow Client's top lieutenants, and yet she's not a target. Not yet, anyway. She's no doubt high on our client's list, but for now, it's information we seek. Infiltrate the house and get us a lead on the Shadow Client. Up for some B&E, 47. On my way. Good aim. Now, according to the local home security provider, the house is equipped with multiple cameras placed around the perimeter. I suggest you get rid of them, 47. You should be able to jimmy open the garage door with a proper tool. Why don't you search the pool area, 47? They could be out. Could be lying low. The satellite scans were inconclusive. Only one way to find out, I'm afraid. Bodies. Male and female. Early 30s. Executed. I see them. Oh, bastards. Looks like Reynard's grisly handiwork, all right. She was never shy about collateral damage. The owners? Don't think so. The house is registered to a non-existing environmental NGO. This feels more like identity theft. Like you, Reynard is known to use disguises. Hmm. 
Keep looking, 47. Nothing we can do for these people now. Found something. Looks like research reports. Berlin, Shanghai. Every major malicious strike since Thomas Cross's kidnapping. Looks like Reynard had a hand in all of them. All in the past, I'm afraid. Keep looking, 47. Found something. A file on Rupert Pierce, founder of Dynasty Global. The world's largest internet retailer. Hmm. If Pierce is a Providence operative, he's likely on the Shadow Client's hit list. But it's not what we came for. Keep looking, 47. Forty-seven. That computer. See if you can't access it. Encrypted. Hmm. Assuming there's a key, Reynard wouldn't just leave it lying around. Wait. According to the floor plan, the room you're in should be a lot bigger. There might be a concealed space behind the wall. Check for hidden panels, forty-seven. Hmm. Appears Reynard's cell is launching another strike. Those are sewer maps of a residential area in Wellington. Well, there's nothing we can do about it now. Our priority is the Shadow Client. Nicely done, 47. Getting caught on tape is the last thing we need. Here we go. For the office computer, no doubt. I'm in. Hurry. I'm detecting movement up the road. A motorcade. Possibly Reynard's. Uploading the data. Hold on. Receiving it now. Hmm. Nothing on the Shadow Client or the other cells. No names, no aliases. I doubt she even knows whom she's working for. Wait, here's something. A message from Robert Knox of Kronstadt Industries. And by the sound of it, he's a Providence operative. A defector. Well, well, well. Client won't like this one bit. And you can't wait to tell him. They're back. Multiple hostiles. I see them. Damn. Okay, we've got all we're going to get. Go to stage two, 47. Eliminate Reynard, and preferably without raising suspicion. One step ahead of the Shadow Client for once. Let's keep it that way. Ugh, I thought this night would never end. What a snob fest. And I even missed out on the action. I'm sorry you had to endure all that free champagne and cello music, Orson. What can I say? You really took one for the yeah, team. Yeah, well, I say stick to what you know.
should receive the pictures as we speak. Ah, uh, blackmail. Donovan's boss, Dynasty CEO Rupert Pierce, is a top Providence operative. But we can't get near him, so I decided to, well, do a bit of outsourcing. Oh, could you fix me a cup of tea? Sure thing. You want sugar? Honey? Um, honey. No problema. Mr. Donovan. Who I am is not important. You have seen the pictures, yes? Good. I will tell you exactly what to do. Do it swiftly and without question, and your wife and children go free, unharmed. Refuse or hesitate, and your family dies. Attempt to signal or warn anybody. And your family dies. Do we have terms? Not very convincing, Mr. Donovan. Take a deep breath. Target down. Well done, 47. Now get off the property. The Mercs have discovered your boat, 47. They're on high alert, combing the beach for intruders. Proceed with caution. Way to get past them unnoticed. I suggest you cause a distraction, 47, and make it a loud one.
Well, it's official. New Zealand paid off. The client has given us carte blanche. Hunt down the militia by any means necessary. A week ago, Providence was a threat. How did you swing the board? The board are practical people, 47. A blank check is hard to turn down. Besides, the Shadow Client's war on Providence is causing a global panic. Someone will need to stop the militia. Might as well be us. And the man on the train? You never told them about his offer. Taking a contract for personal gain is against ICA regulations. Sodas would have been proud. Is that a sense of humor, 47? Whatever next, crying at the movies? Why are you doing this? I know what it's like to have everything taken from you. He claims to know about your past, your childhood, your memories, everything Ortmeier stole from you. And you trust him? About as far as I can throw him. But this is our best lead in 20 years. I say it's time we break a few rules. Good afternoon, 47. Your destination is the annual Global Innovation Motor Race in Miami, Florida. After analyzing the data from Reynard's computer, the case is clear. The Providence defectors are Robert and Sierra Knox, head of robotics developer Kronstadt Industries. A visionary inventor and technological innovator, Robert Knox has spearheaded Kronstadt Industries to the bleeding edge of technological development. His equally brilliant daughter, Sierra, is not only a financial wizard, but also a fiercely competitive race car driver with a fiery temper to match. Kronstadt enjoys enormous popularity with global consumers. However, few are aware that the company is also one of the world's leading suppliers of next-gen military tech. Last year, despotic ruler Jin Po employed prototype Kronstadt drones against peaceful civilian protesters in the now infamous Tungyan Valley incident. And although it has yet to be proven, there is little doubt that the Noxes personally brokered the deal, making them complicit in a war crime. It is unclear why the Noxes would betray their masters, but likely the fear of being next on the Shadow Client's hit list has pressured them to cut a deal with the enemy. Undoubtedly, with Kronstadt Industries on their side, the militia will increase their attacks tenfold. And so our contract obligates us to retire Robert and Sierra Knox and contain the damage they may inflict on Providence. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Miami, 47. The innovation race is on its last day, and it is down to the wire. Thousands of eager fans are gathered for the final laps of this unexpectedly close race. Sierra Knox is expertly piloting her red Kronstadt car. Her father, Robert Knox, roams the nearby expo building where Kronstadt is showcasing its new prototype car. The Kronstadt RK Mark III has seen fierce competition from the Chinese Kowoon Heavy Industries' new racer. 
Moses Lee, CEO of Kowoon, has taken a dominant lead and looks invincible. Sierra Knox will need to risk it all if she wants to win for the third year in a row. The stakes are as high as they can get. One of the Kronstadt pit crew has quit the team in protest, and Grace Miller, the ball buster chief mechanic, is in critical need of a replacement. Why don't you step in and offer your services, 47? You're good with a wrench. Man out there. Look at those lap times! I guess he's out to show Matthias Schuster who's number one. Excellent, 47. And now for a bit of maintenance. 
Get down. Next up, Robert Knox. What the hell just happened? Sierra! Oh, oh, oh man, I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. Oh man, I'm okay. Mr. Mack, it's Grace Miller in the Kronstadt pit. Are you watching the beat? Sierra. Another ordinary day at the office. Daughter, wouldn't he want to... I understand he's busy, but she could be dead, for God's sake. Fine, I'll let you handle it. Normally reserved for the driver. Fixed him right up. What? Gee, it's me. I'm here now. Ready to meet up with Sierra Knox over at the hotel. Yeah, after the race. I just gotta pick up the documents from my back, but uh. That is Ted Mendez, one of the country's most influential military-grade money men. This must be connected to Kronstadt. Nope, Ted here. Just returning your call before heading over to the Expo building to meet Knox for the new combat android presentation. No, not yet. I'm letting this you guy's a genius, and you know what they're like. This put me lacking any discipline or respect for other people. Last time, I tried to have a meeting with him. He had me sitting in a room for four hours before canceling. I'll head up when I feel like it. All right, I'll call you after the presentation. Speak then. Ted Mendez, a defense funding consultant with the U.S. military, is scheduled for a private demonstration of a new Kronstadt robotics project. Sounds like a way to get up close and personal with Robert Knox, 47. Mechanic?
Mr. Mendez. Good to see you, sir. The demonstration is scheduled to take place on the upper floors. Please feel free to use the stairs right over there. Excuse me. Can you tell me where to go, please? It's just up these stairs. Hey there, big guy. Center. Collecting pictures of celebrity entrepreneurs now, 47? Hmm. What are you thinking? Ah, Ted. Good to find Hello there. I guess traffic was rough. Ah, never mind. Let me show you everything. I'm gonna say something provocative now, Ted. War is going out of fashion. It's dirty. It's just plain bad PR. Nobody wants to exchange their children and loved ones for flags and medals anymore. The glory is gone, Ted. But, luckily, Kronstadt has a solution for that. Imagine this. Android infiltrators operating in the field, disguised and fully embedded, ready to strike at a moment's notice. Indestructible robotic operators who can infiltrate the deepest sanctuary of any adversary striking an unseen fatal blow, a surgical tool for a blunt world. Imagine an army of them, fully equipped android medics, seeking out wounded servicemen and injured civilians, bringing them to safety or patching them up then and there. Android pilots delivering payloads deep inside enemy territory with uncanny precision and minimal collateral damage. All right, Mendez, it's very straightforward. Let me show you. I just I pick any of the pictures whatever. on the desk, then I use the scanner to upload the biometric data, and Palace will do the rest. Target acquired, WB. Obviously, the final system won't rely on you manually feeding it biometric data. This is still a prototype. This is a pivotal moment in modern conflict solution, Ted. Palace is entirely foolproof. All you need is to pick a photo from the table and scan it just like I showed you. It's perfectly safe. Go ahead, make my day. Turn the what the hell? Robert Knox. Go to hell. Both targets down. Well done, 47. Head for an exit and we'll speak again soon. Right there. 
Berlin. Shanghai. Montreal. We're bleeding operatives. Panic is spreading, and now we are axing our own? Knox was a traitor. He would have caused incalculable damage. And he won't be the last. This is exactly what the enemy wants. We need to fight the sickness, not the symptom. And I have just the tool for the job. Right. The Burnwood woman. Eric Soders warned you about her, didn't he? The Crusader. I can handle Miss Burnwood. Everyone hates power until you offer them some. And you ought to know. ICA speaks the enemy's language. We need them. And once we don't... <laughs> We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Fact remains, we are shadowboxing. We need to know who we are up against. I was getting to that. His name is Lucas Gray, the late Mr. Cobb's head of security. Cobb was ground zero, first of our operatives to die. It had to be one of his staff, someone with military training and access to the plane. Ah, grasping at straws. Gray is a mercenary, a veteran of every backwater tragedy you've ever ignored on the five o'clock news. Chechnya, Sierra Leone, the list goes on, but before 89, nothing. No records of any kind. Ah, oh, come on. CIA, KGB, plenty of spies went dark. After the curtain was lifted, I cast a very wide net. Lucas Gray simply does not exist. <clears throat> if you're all quite done wetting yourselves with excitement, I couldn't give two shits where he came from. I only want to know one thing. How does he know about us? I swear to God, this hearts and flowers crap will get us both killed. Can't you see? Your so-called friend is working for them now. He's not the man you knew. This is his fight too, Olivia. Even if he doesn't realize it. Like it or not, 47 is our last and only lead on the partners. He needs to remember. He's coming for us. And unlike you, he won't hesitate. Just get me inside. Rico, I need a favor.
morning, 47. Our Providence contact has shared the identity of the Shadow Client, a former mercenary and bodyguard by the name of Lucas Gray. His past is a black void, but our analysts are digging deep. Meanwhile, we've had a breakthrough of our own. Comparing the malicious attack patterns with global shipping and transportation routes, we've figured out how Mr. Gray and his paramilitaries move around the world undetected. They're using the distribution network of the Delgado Cartel, Colombia's biggest drug manufacturer. Clearly, Gray must have struck a deal with the Delgados. Consequently, if we can cripple the cartel, we can severely limit the malicious strike range. But to do so, we need to slay a three-headed serpent. Sociopathic cartel head Rico Delgado and his two closest lieutenants, PR guru Andrea Martinez and savant chemist Jorge Franco. With equal parts guts and guile, Rico Delgado runs a thriving billion-dollar criminal empire. The word is, the brutal and volatile cartel head is hell-bent on becoming the number one drug lord in the world. To achieve this, Martinez, a childhood friend of Delgado's, has been buttering up state leaders and decision makers, paving the way for an expansion of the Delgado logistics network, while the brilliant but aloof and antisocial Franco has been hard at work developing a new type of super cocaine. So, three of Colombia's most infamous crime lords inhabiting a decidedly hostile environment. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Colombia, 47. The remote village of Santa Fortuna awaits you deep inside the Colombian rainforest. An iron-fisted Delgado cartel rules over the village and its surroundings. Security around Santa Fortuna and the closed-off cartel compound is extremely tight. Armed sicarios patrol the streets of the village, ready to enforce harsh punishments to those who do not comply. Rumors persist of hidden transportation cave systems connecting the village, the cartel compound, and the hidden coca fields beyond. It is a rare occurrence to have all three cartel leaders present in the village at the same time. Expect that all targets are protected by scrupulous killers armed with automatic weapons. Rico Delgado inhabits his fortified mansion on the outskirts of the village, while Andrea Martinez can be found in her village office or around Santa Fortuna itself. And Jorge Franco is engaged in development of a new drug in his field laboratory. Happy hunting, 47. I delivered over by some cave entrance behind the pharmacy, but it broke. Bummer, man. So, a drug dealer from Sapienza has been testing a new method for smuggling Delgado brand cocaine into Europe, baking the substance into souvenirs, coated in a special anti-drug detection paint solution. The dealer has been traveling the globe, testing the method. However, he accidentally broke the souvenir on arrival and needs to mend it before going to see Franco. Maybe just glue it together? I don't know. I think it's gonna ruin the taste test. This Franco guy is like a bloodhound, but, you know, with taste, not smell. You know? Yeah, man, that's too bad. I'd still try to glue you. Yeah, we 
figures. Looking sharp, my friend. How may I help you today, senor? I'd like to buy some glue, please. No, I'm afraid we just ran out of that item, senor. I sold the last bottle to the mechanic next door. This is a smart investment. You know how I know that? I have the only rickshaw in town, and when backpackers see a rickshaw, they have to ride it. It's in their code or something. Si, sí, claro. I remember when you offered those one-day guided tours through the jungle, got lost, and barely made it out alive. Only half the tour group. Do you sell blue? A la puta! You probably want to set aside more time to just soak in the local ambience, though. I mean, don't stress about seeing everything. Hey, man. You got some glue around here? Like, really solid stuff? Like, super, super glue? No, senor. I've told you about 15 times already. There's no glue here. You can find it in a store. Yeah, I'm not really feeling the universe in that way right now. Maybe later.
nice day. Oh yeah, if you want to come through, I'm going to have to bite you down, cool? This will be over in no time. All right, good job, my man. Thank you. All right. Mr. Franco is expecting you in the caves below. I'll just radio the others. Hang on. Groovy. It's Carlos. Oye, amigo. Tell Franco we come this year. Now. All right, come with me. Try not to get lost, okay? Play this kind of dangerous. I'll do my best. Isn't this kind of work sort of breaking the hippie code? I live by my own rules. So I guess all that make love not war thing sort of lost its luster, huh? Peace and love isn't really my thing. Nice one, 47. And now for Franco to sample his handiwork. Ah, so, despite an annoying delay, it's finally here. Let's have a look. It got through customs without a problem, we hope? I had no issues. Excellent. We're not sure whether this will pass the taste test, but that remains to be seen. Follow us, please. Franco confirmed down. Nice work, 47.
no. in the world. Maybe he's here to see that Delgado guy we've been hearing about? Sounds like he's got money to spare. So, Pea Power, celebrity tattooist of Tattoo Torment fame, has come to Santa Fortuna, presumably to work his magic on Rico Delgado, a known ink enthusiast. Sounds like an invitation to the mansion, 47. Are you feeling expressive? Could be. <gasps> Lucky guy. I wish I could afford one of his pieces. Ah, his work isn't that impressive. All he really seems to be doing is touch up, cover up some box work on that reality TV show of his. Improving on stuff that looks like crap probably isn't too hard, you know? Entonces, Javier is seeing his boss's daughter. Mm. I didn't know this thing was quite something. Do you know? That is P Power. Real name, Paul Powers celebrity tattoo artist and reality TV star. Mate, I'm telling you, I've been in some crazy shit before where this takes the cake. Mm -hmm. I know where I'm supposed to be right now. The Delgado Mansion. Just knock on the front gate, they said. And then what? Walk in and tattoo the world's most notorious cartel boss. I can see how that's not easy. I heard he kills me. Just for fun. Imagine what he'd do to me if I messed up. Oh, sure, he's dangerous. But it's his wife you need to look out for, caballero. I'm a dead man. Yeah, Dexy, it's me. Look, I'm in real trouble here. Call me back, all right? Oh, you, are you okay? You look like you're wearing a fever or something. Fine, just need to pull out. All right. You know if you need anything, call the drink, but see. You should probably check that out. Okie dokie. Hey? Thumbs up, mate. You heard the news about the bullet. 
how they had 15 guys in lockup in Mala, and yet all of them worked two hours after we broke. That's what we have to work. That combination of looking entirely stable to you? Well, I'm not based on that. Power guy? Hang on, man. I hope you don't mind, but we need to freeze. You're not coming this way unless I fire you down first. That's not open for discussion. You're entering the lion's den, 47. Tread carefully. Practically everyone like here is dangerous, stuff, not least Rico Born Delgado himself. Everybody loves that shit. Okay, All right, let's go, Mr. let's go, parcero, mueva, si. Mrs. Delgado wanted to meet you. She's a big fan. She'll take you to Rico afterwards. My sister got at the two eyes. It was supposed to be a tribute to her son, but the guy fucked it up. Maybe Gustavo ended up looking like a dead chupacabra. When my brother-in-law saw the tattoo, he went down to the guy's house. Shot him dead. Which was kind of dumb, because he was the only that one piece around for a hundred miles. Can't say that ever happened to me. You bet. Oh my god! What's up, yo? It's really you! Big power! It's such an honor to meet you. I just love your show. That episode where you tattoo the heart of the heart of the dead dying policeman while they're administrating CPR. <laughs> it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. A great moment. I cherish the memory to this day. Ah, oh, see. So, Rico has this tattoo on his neck and he insists it's supposed to be based on the photo of me. I'm not a fool, Mr. Powers. My nose never looked like that, not even before the operation. And sure, I've had a few ticks done here and there, but nothing as drastic as that. I want you to make it look like me, not some young skank. I'll do my very best, Mrs. Delgado. Ah, oh, Chico, let me just grab a quick selfie with you, all right? Sure, why not? Yay! Just look this way. Oh, can see. Wow, we look so good together. This is great. So far, so good, 47. Now to leave your mark on Mr. Delgado. So, this is the famous Pete Bauer, tattoo artist to the stars. Yeah. You don't exactly look like you do on TV, do you? There's something different about you. Carino, don't insult our guest. He's obviously not been sitting in a stylist chair for days, but this is Pete Bauer. Who else would it be? Well, what about those cheekbones? The guy on TV didn't have cheekbones like that. Hey, Rico, enough. You know they fix all that in post-production. Just let the man work. Okay, fine. Whatever you say. Okay, I'm ready. Let's get this thing fixed. Stop doing that! What? Am I not allowed to update my social channels anymore? Is that it? You can't focus here, all right? What's the problem? You don't even have to do anything. Whoa, hey, Rico, don't worry. I've got this under control. Hey, the two guy. I'm watching you. One wrong move, you know, I start peeing. You hear me? Hey, relax, Jose. We're fine. Better safe than sorry, boss. Put the gun away, I'm fine. I'm sorry, but... I'm just doing my job, Patron. Are you doing this just to annoy me, cat? I'm just grabbing a few shots for the socials. Relax, Rico. It's very distracting, kitty cat. Please stop now. You need to keep still, Mr. Delgado. I wouldn't want to stab you by accident. 
You heard the man, Catalina. Leave us now. Fine. Have it your way. But then talk to you better look exactly like me when you're done with your new BFF, Rico. Calm down, all right? Everything's okay here. Just making sure the script doesn't try anything funny. Yeah, I need you to stand down. Stop waving that thing around. No, 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 no. I'm not willing to take any risks here, Hefe. So what are we waiting for, huh? I'm here, I'm ready. Get on with it. Hey, Jose, I need you to leave us alone now. You're too wound up right now. You understand? All right, boss, all right. But I'll be back in a little while if I don't hear from you, way one. Oh, finally. So peace and quiet. Can I finish my work now? <laughs> do what you do best, man. You got it. Rico Delgado has been eliminated. Nicely done. Will you stop showing off your agility? Did you hear Javier stole the love letter Hector Delgado wrote for Martinez? Hey, you got no business around here. Just take off, okay? Did you hear Javier stole the love letter Hector Delgado wrote for Martinez? Had to jump out of a wind. Do you mind? Just keep walking. Did you hear Javier stole the love letter Hector Delgado wrote for Martinez? Had to jump out of a window before Hector discovered it. I think he hurt his leg in the process. Yeah, I heard. He even passed the letter around the basement bar at the party that night. Weird to think Hector and Martinez used to be an idol. I mean, he's bad shaped crazy. She's so hyper luxurious. She can't even stand to be in her village mansion for too long. Talk about an old couple. Yeah, I love to see her face. It's huh. Rico Delgado's brother Hector is trying to win back his old flame, Andrea Martinez. Apparently, Hector has authored a rather slushy love letter. For one of the Sicarios foolhardily stole it from Hector's room during last night's party. I suggest you acquire that letter, 47. From what we know about Martinez, a declaration of love from Hector is bound to provoke a reaction. Rumor has it, she hates him. That's my impression as well. That's Hector. Mr. 
thing right here. You or no? Hey, I see not. I have a letter Don't from Miss Martinez. All right, let me see that. Is that from Hector? I wouldn't know anything about that. Well, let me enlighten you. Hector Delgado and Andrea Martinez were an item once. Explosive and deadly. Things did not end well between them. He wants them to get back together. She wants them to go to hell. She's not accepting letters or gifts or anything from him. And neither am I. You put it on her desk yourself if it's so important to you. Well done, 47. This should be good. Read it and get it over with. Ah, to hell with it. Let's see what that fool has to tell me. See what he has to say. My Hector, you romantic fool. I had no idea you still felt this way. All targets neutralized. This should paralyze the cartel. Excellent work, 47. Now head for an exit.
time? I'm sure Mr. Martinez. Better pick up that fish for a while. Status. Columbia assignment successful. Tactical targets neutralized. Militia transport network disabled. Location of primary target unknown. Team chasing several leads. End message encrypt and send. source checks out. We can prove the board knew about the chemical leaks. We'll have grounds for a retrial. It won't make a difference. They're too powerful. They're not the devil, Nancy. Just a company. They're not above the law, don't you see? This is bigger than James. Those bastards killed 80 people. And they got away with it. Think about what that means. No one's untouchable. No one's untouchable. Diana! Coming! Got what we came for. Move out. Good evening, 47. The militia has released a hostage tape, outing the existence of Providence to the world. This was a fatal mistake, and our analysts are tracing its origin as we speak. In the meantime, 
We have a lead on Lucas Gray's top lieutenant. Turns out the Delgado cartel's counterfeiting unit was creating fake IDs for the militia. And one operative in particular stands out, Wazir Kale, an infamous South China Sea pirate better known by his nom de guerre, the Maelstrom. The Maelstrom and his cutthroat band of outlaws were the scourge of the shipping industry in the post-recession years. But his reign of terror came to an end with the disastrous 2014 hijacking of the supertanker, Francis King. Chinese elite forces stormed the ship, resulting in the deaths of a dozen sailors and most of the Maelstrom's crew. But Kale slipped away unseen. The Maelstrom's connection to Grey is unknown, but we believe it was he who carried out the audacious killing of a Providence CEO in Shanghai, along with two reactivated members of his old pirate gang, Vanya Shah, a shady figure in Mumbai's criminal underworld, and Darwood Rangan, the gang's old cashier turned dodgy movie producer. Shaw, Rangan, and the Maelstrom form Lucas Gray's Eastern Cell. They are a crack strike team, and stopping them is our client's most pressing concern. Unfortunately, the elusive Maelstrom appears to have vanished into the seedy underbelly of Mumbai, the cradle of his criminal legend, and no one knows his whereabouts or what he currently looks like. So, a bandit queen, a showbiz charlatan, and one certifiable ghost. I shall leave you to prepare. Welcome to Mumbai, 47. One of the most densely populated cities in the world, home to more than 12 million people. If you wanted to disappear and hide from the world, this vast city is perfect. The maze-like sprawling slums offer secret paths and surprises around every corner. The elusive Maelstrom knows the city like the back of his own hand. Locating him will be a considerable challenge. A place to start could be the slums where his former gang, the Crows, has recently risen from the ashes. Darwood Rangan will be easy to find in his half-finished tower, wrapping up his new film called Mumbai Hero. While Vanya Shah has ensconced herself in the overgrown remains of an old train yard. Your three targets call this labyrinthine part of the city home, so choose your approach carefully. Our intel suggests the Maelstrom is hiding somewhere in the city slums. I've marked the headquarters of the Crows on your map. It's me. It is imperative you notify me as soon as Sagar's barbershop is open again. He is an excellent source of information, and I want to make sure he understands who he's working for now. Signal me at once when the shop is open. That is all. Achai, Padmada. Any idea why the boss wants to know when the barber shop is open again? Yeah. Saga, the barber, has a side business digging in information. He basically has every snitch in the slum sharing the news with him. Boss wants him on our side. Barbie even came down to the hideout to be shown a picture of the boss so he'd recognize him when meeting him. Yeah, all the same. This barber is tangled up in some shady business, 47. But even more interesting, he may have seen a picture of the Maelstrom in the hideout of the street gang known as the Crows. That picture would be very helpful to our cause. This is so strange. You know the boss. He says having a secret identity is key to what he does. I honestly don't understand what he means. The guy's a bit of a mystery to me.
Must be the new guy. My coach always said I had a good arm. Have you ever seen me bowl? Man, I was fast. I'd throw that ball like a damn lightning bolt. Oh, sure. I could have gone far, all right. And I always want to be No use in crying over the spirit. The past is the past, my friend. Yeah, he was literally about to shit himself when he brought him down. Delving straight into the heart of darkness, 47. Good luck. A photograph and a note addressed to Sagar the barber. This looks like a very re. Recent picture of the maelstrom. With this in hand, picking him out in a crowd should be possible. You could also investigate the barber shop and see what is going on there. I love my work, but I 
47, that man there, he resembles the Maelstrom. Try to get close to him for a visual ID. What are you doing? You need to open the shop. There are people waiting outside already. I, I, I can't remember what he looks like. The guy the crows wanted me to provide information to, you know, their boss. They should... Hey! Didn't no one bother to teach you any manners? I, I, I can't remember what he looks like. The guy the crows wanted me to provide information to, you know. Their boss. They showed me his picture in their hideout two days ago. But I was so stressed out. I thought they were going to kill me or something. I, I can't remember his face. What if he shows up and, and, I, and I miss him? Then you should go and explain it to them. They probably still have the picture there. But what if they hurt me? What will happen to you? Or if they decide to burn down the shop like they did with that other guy with the metal recycling, I won't do it. Pavin, I told you we would get into trouble with this snitching business. But you had to go and earn some easy money sharing information with the gangs. This is your mess. You fix it. All right, 47. Yes, We're open for business. No we know what the Maelstrom looks like and expect him to show up. Patience and shaving cream is what's on the menu now, 47. Not right now. No, that isn't the Maelstrom. I really needed a shave. Maybe later, sir. Maybe next time, then. Any chance for a shave today? No, that wasn't him. I'm afraid not, sir. Oh, that's too bad. That wasn't him. No. I'm sorry, sir. Hello. Not right Can now. I get a shave, please? Big mistake to deny me. Shame. Not the mills. Not at this moment, sir. Okay, you're 47, that man by the counter. Hey, 
That's the maelstrom. That looks like our patience paid off. I'm ready. How about you invite him in for a close shave? Right, I'm ready for my shave. Make it a close one. The tides are changing, my friend. Can you feel it in the air? My bones are creaking with joy at the prospect of what is about to happen. I don't feel anything, I'm afraid. You will, friend. You have an important task ahead of you, have you not? I sense that about you. Together, we will all release the shackles that have bound us far too long and rise up against those who seek to keep us down. Whether those are our friends or foes, a day of reckoning is coming, is it not? It does seem unavoidable. <laughs> The infamous Maelstrom is dead. Very well done, 47. No rest for the wicked, however. On to the next one. Inside and look. Only the Royal Guard can do stuff like that. I'm sure Misha will send someone with more hands on experience than me. He's the only tailor in town that can make that damn dress. That's what happens when you drown all the others, I guess. It appears Vanya Shah is in the market for a dress fit for a queen. She's sent after a local tailor, but for some reason the man refuses to cooperate. A man of your impeccable taste should be able to fill in perfectly for the tailor. Just tell him I'm not here. Sir, can I interest you in my fine wares? Cheap, durable cloth in many special... How much of these? Ah, my friend, you have chosen well. Now, we have the best prices here. What do you say to 140 rupees per running meter? Does that sound fair? <laughs> no? Nothing? Ah, I can see you're a man of refined taste and a skilled handler. My kids will only eat rice tonight, but it's yours for 105 rupees. It's a deal, yes? Wow, those eyes are really burning into me, sir. Like you're just looking straight into my soul. Okay, final offer now. 90 rupees. 90 rupees per running meter. 
That's my own cost. I, I really can't go low. It's a deal. Ah, good, good. Take any of the bundles, please. Just one, though. Great. Thank you. Come again. So, come on. How are you? So? I'm not sure I've seen you. Where the hell are you? Look, man. Oh. No, no. Now get Oh, crap. By her false rule long You're enough, and someone needs now. to take a stand. When you hear this, you Besides, come down by the she stand. killed I'm everyone that came to her. Nobody knows what she wants. I can't risk it. Better to run. There's a bundle of money hidden in a box under the power junction near the bottom. Up. It's for you. If you need more, talk to the people at the shop. They will help you. I know. I will talk to you soon. Questions asked. Can you get me out of Mumbai tonight? If you have the best, son, I can help. I'll find some. Thank you. Stay for a few weeks. Maybe a month. Can you help me? Anywhere outside the city is fine. No, just for me. Family is staying in the city for now. That sounds very good. Thank you. I'll be in touch tomorrow, okay? Excellent. Let's find out what kind of dress a woman like Vanya Shah wants. Shah wants a cerulean dress, 47. Perhaps you will be able to source a roll of the right fabric at the local cloth market. Sir! I'm... Hey! 
What the fuck are you doing here? Hey! Die! 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 There's a hell of a thing. Yeah. Anyone see him? Come there. Taylor guy. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Hello. Ah, it's you. Did you bring the cloth for Miss Sharp? Yes, I have it right here. About bloody time. Come with me. Oh, don't be alarmed, by the way. Miss Shah takes security very seriously, so the guards will search you. Not Come on. Worry. Let's see what you have in your pockets today. you on the flip side. I'm not exactly enjoying this either, so just stay still and we'll be done soon. Okay, go on then. Miss Shah has been dying to meet you. It's not wise to keep her waiting, you know. I won't disappoint her then. That is a good idea. She's not been happy with the other tailors. A word of warning. Just play along with her eccentricities. She can be rather dangerous. Thank you. I'll do my best. Good man. Do well and there will be a lot of money in it for you. I know. Here we are. Mm. Just go through there. The queen is waiting for you in the garden. So soothing. She starts the concert. She's always treated my family. Yeah. I see. That is Vanya Shah, self-appointed queen of the Mumbai slums. Your husband is dead, is he not? Yes, he is. Two years now. And your children are already working elsewhere in the city. Yes, but you have nothing to offer me then. I'm sorry, but water and power are precious assets here. I barely have enough for my own needs. You will have to make do with what you have. I understand. Thank you, my queen. Ah, the elusive tailor. Here at last. Let's have a look at the cloth you've chosen. I want to make sure the color is the right one. Yes, of course. Here it is. Excellent. Finally, some progress here. Come with me. I want you to take my measurements while you're here. Smart work, 47. Shah will want to have privacy when measuring for the dress. I'll leave the final execution up to you. Measuring right. If you didn't bring a tape, I'm pretty certain one of the other tailors left theirs behind. You can use that. They won't need it. Relax your back, please, Miss Shah. I'll just measure your arms now, Miss Shah. Turn around, please, Miss Shah. I need to measure shoulder to shoulder. You've probably...
Confirmed kill on Vanya Shaw. Excellent work, 47. Just one target left. Let's bring this one home. I miss home in school. Measure twice, cut one, right? Ah, you made it out alive. I just heard someone kill the other day. Oh. Yes, hello. A tailor. Hello. 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 Oh my god, I cannot wait to see that new Rangan movie they're shooting over at the tower. Salesman or something. Forty-seven. This is one of the Mumbai chores. My records show a few residential complaints about a new tenant in the building. Something related to strange behavior. Might be worth looking into. I don't know what, but I'm sure he's up. I can't adjust the score. I've never made that shot. Well, well. It appears we have a rival assassin in Mumbai, and he's training his sights on Darwood Rangan. By the looks of it, I'd say we're dealing with a local operator known as the Kashmirian. I'll never get that scope adjusted with this horrible viewfinder. Good thinking, 47. Now, if we could only make Rangan appear in that window somehow. Karen Dahl, a.k.a. the Kashmirian, was born in the U.S., but fled to his mother's native land, India, 20 years ago, following an FBI investigation into a string of serial killings in Texas. He adopted a new identity here, and now works as a gun for hire for local mobsters. But who would want Rangan dead? Is the fan good to go? I know they're still trying to find the right lines for the shoot, but in case they do, we need to be ready for the death. You bet. I mean, I'm a great dancer, right? But I'm not a superhuman. I get tired, and when you get tired, mistakes, and that's when you get hurt. Gregory Hunter, has anyone seen Gregory Hunter recently? I need him here for the final photo shoot with Mr. Hunter. Everyone else is ready. If anyone sees Gregory Hunter, let me know. Uh, hello, sir. Have a lovely day. 
When are you gonna be done mixing those colors? I mean, how long can it take to smudge out a few blues and reds? I'm creating art here. 70% of the work is finding the right colors. Color mixing is an entire art form on its own. It takes time. Yeah, well, get a move on. Mr. Rongan wants you to go... Sir, with all due respect, I'm gonna kick your ass if you don't get out of my I base. I wish there was some way out of this mess. Yeah, well, get a move on. Mr. Rongan wants you to go and get him as soon as you're done mixing your fancy colors there. You got it? Fine. If only I could compromise a little with my artistic integrity. Hey, Mr. Hussein, go on upstairs and wait for Mr. Rangan. I'm sure he'll be there shortly. It's me. Just to let you know that the house artist is ready to continue painting. After you, Mr. Rangan. That is Darwood Rangan, producer of mediocre movies and a full-time criminal. His brutality is overshadowed only by his giant ego. use of colors and form. Kya baat hai? If the new piece catches my forceful nature like this, I will have nothing short of a masterpiece on my hands. I'll be the envy of everyone. I guarantee a perfect execution, hey, Mr. Lincoln. All right. Chala, let's get this done with. I expect these to be the final brush strokes, Mr. Hussain. I'm a busy man here. All right, 47. Let's see if the aim of our Kashmirian friend is true. Hmm. Once the word gets out and my art-appreciating friends see it, your phone will be ringing off the hook. I can't wait. Hold your breath for a moment, Mr. Rangan. And that's the reason I told you I wouldn't pay for the commission, by the way. I'm not stingy, no, no, not at all. But if I'm already paying you in exposure, hmm? well, let's not... Overdo it, huh? you know? I prefer cash over exposure. Clench your fist, please. <laughs> Who doesn't? 
बट समाइम्स एक्सपोजर कैन बी वर्थ मोर देन जस्ट मनी देखो इन दिस केस इट्स द गिफ्ट दैट कीप्स ऑन गिविंग जस्ट वेट एंड सी वेन यू आर डन विद दिस जॉब द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विल बी रोलिंग इन दैट साउंड वंडरफुल मिस्टर रैंगन कैन यू लुक अप अट थैंक यू दैट शॉट केम फ्रॉम द छोल्स It looks like the Kashmirian finally got a clear line of fire. Darwood Rangan is dead and not even by your hand, 47. What will you think of next? Mission completed. Time to find an exit. Just one thing to go and we're done. Looks like the fan has been set up again. Do you know why they haven't shot it yet? According to records, this was a youth correctional facility until 1962, when the estate was overtaken by an obscure Soviet research fund, the Institute for Human Betterment. Looks deserted. The place was abandoned after a fire in '89. Then, only a few weeks ago, it was acquired by an anonymous investor using cryptocurrency. It has to be Lucas Gray. He's here. Be careful, 47. The breadcrumbs were almost too easy to follow. It could be a trap. Not a trap. An invitation. Seven. 
And even now, you don't remember. This place. This was our prison. Where father trained us, shaped us into killers for providence. Now, you don't remember. They ripped it out of you, wiped it away, but I do. I remember everything. You're a terrorist with nothing to lose. You'd say anything. I know, it's difficult. You never miss your mark or question your function. But we made a pact. You and I. Do this, and we both lose. There was an incident. That boy, he died. He lived. Because of you. Don't you remember his name? You know this. Deep down, you know. What was his name? Subject Six. Your name is Subject Six. And what is our purpose? To take them all down. We were going to tear it all down. The Institute, Providence, everyone who'd ever hurt us. We failed. The partners grew paranoid, made sure that Ortmeier's children would never challenge them again. I'm the only one who got away unchanged. The only one left who remembers. Ortmeier was Providence. Everything he did to us, everything he made us do, it all leads back to them. I'm breaking more rules than I care to count, Mr. Gray. What's your play? The partners hide behind a cloak of anonymity. Only one man knows their true identities. Your client, the top controller, the one they call the Constant. He is the key. <laughs> but he is untraceable. So what am I missing? A man would come to the Institute. A man with a Providence pin. The first constant. If we find him, if he's still alive, he's our way in. You don't know who he is, but 47 does. <laughs> That's what this reunion is all about. Show them. You're just gonna hand it over. Our one bargaining chip. Olivia. <sighs> Fine. 47's memory was erased, irreversibly at the time, but... After Ortmeier's death, his estate was acquired by the Ether Corporation. And they made an antidote. It's a long shot, I know. This is not how it works. We don't just join the revolution. ICA is neutral. We don't take sides. I hate to break it to you, lady, but neutrality is a side. It's the side of the status quo. People have died. Civilians. You align yourself with terrorists, murderers. Sometimes even monsters serve a purpose. Look. Enough. You have a choice. But I made mine a long time ago. I will finish what I started. Subject 47, most gifted of all my boys. So you're the pick of the litter. Tell me about the incident. 
The subject ran away. He and another boy. The instigator was punished accordingly. As were all the neighbors. My men did what needed to be done. It won't happen again. Bring your house in order, Doctor. You won't like the alternative. I remember who he is. Gentlemen, let's go over the plan. The first constant is none other than Janus, the legendary Cold War spymaster, a KGB senior officer and head of the sixth column special branch at Lubienka. Janus is a certified genius and expert of counterintelligence. He retired from the KGB in 1988 when he fell out of favor with the Kremlin and defected to the US. Shortly after, the Soviet Union collapsed. Now, it is unclear when Janus stepped down as the constant, but since 2004, he has been a resident of a quiet community in suburban Vermont. Mr. Gray. Right. So here's the catch. As an elite KGB agent, Janus was trained to withstand interrogation and torture. No amount of pressure will force him to disclose information he doesn't want to. Instead, we will need to search his home for clues. But if Providence learns of our presence, the game is up. So we frame Janus, make Providence think he was the real Shadow Client. Correct. I will file a false ICA report, claiming to have traced a number of calls from Janus's house to the Institute in Romania. The case will seem clear. Mr. Gray was only a figurehead. Janus was pulling the strings all along. And by eliminating him, we will have neutralized the militia once and for all. However, for this subterfuge to work, you'll also need to deal with Janus's security detail. A Providence Herald and former Secret Service agent by the name of Nolan Cassidy. Intel describes him as diligent and inquisitive, and we cannot risk that he contradicts our story to his employer. Seems workable. I certainly hope so. Everything depends on this next move, 47. You made this our fight. Now let's even the playing field. Littleton Creek, Vermont. On the surface, a picture-perfect suburban dream. Wide roads, golden maple trees, and verdant lawns. Most residents here are white-collar professionals, ranging from university staff to government employees. Most, but not all. Janus's unpresuming home is protected by a host of bodyguards, and intel shows that the fragile former constant rarely leaves the property. Nolan Cassidy, on the other hand, roams the neighborhood streets. A recent arrival, the dutiful Providence Herald is busy making threat assessments and settling in with his security team. Now remember, this is about more than just revenge. Janus is the key to bring down Providence. So get in there and find us a lead. Good luck, 47. Darling, I'm so hungry. Have you seen those beautiful patties back there? And Mr. Wilson just keeps standing behind the grill, even though there's clearly no more gas on it. I know, it's weird. 
Why doesn't he go grab a new canister? I'm telling you, these new folks are strange. Did you see that Cassidy guy snooping around here? He's been looking at the party three times already. Why not just go inside? It's open to everyone. Yeah, it's strange, all right. The Wilsons are throwing a barbecue and everyone's invited. It sounds like Nolan Cassidy has some interest in the party as well, but for some reason, he's unwilling to go inside. Maybe you can help fix whatever's wrong in there, 40. Oh!
At least the seat's gonna be warm for you. Okay. Nolan Cassidy is down. Good work, 47. Janus awaits your attention. Same guy who just did Cassidy's, right? Yeah. So I let him use the green shipping container to store the chemicals. I asked him to explain this, but he heard me that it was only a Janus is apparently engaged in a civil lawsuit with another resident of Whittleton Creek. James Batty, the plaintiff, wants Janus to stop his annual landing of a helicopter near the local creek. The lawsuit also mentions Nolan Cassidy and his unlawful surveillance around town. Hmm. So Janus takes a helicopter trip once per year. I think we're on to something here, 47. 47? I think it would be beneficial to locate the unlawful surveillance mentioned in the lawsuit. Perhaps Nolan Cassidy's house would be a good place to start. A cigar box with a few cigars and a note inside. Well, this is very interesting. The note indicates that the box was given to Janus by the Constant as per tradition, he writes. 47. This could mean the Constant and Janus meet up on a regular basis. Excellent find. Nolan Cassidy! Slivers of past shimmers, or something like that. See, my wife's reading it now. I can't get her to do anything around the house. No, no, it's not a novel. I think it's a, a journal, or a, or a diary. He's one of the security people working over at that old Russian guy's house. It's gotta be something from the old man's archives. Oh. If that's one of Janus's well, diaries, it, it might contain some important information about his past. My books these days. Our past. Or maybe something that can help us locate the constant. Hey, bro. Uh-huh. Come in. Heard something weird. 
I'm gonna go check it out. Oh, yeah, that's... <laughs> Janus's many diaries. He's apparently been the chairman of the Art Society for years. He stepped down very recently, but is still attached to the Society. Well, 47, this is valuable information. Good work, 47. We now know Janus is meeting with the Constant at an event related to the Ark Society. And we have an approximate date as well. I think that's all we're going to get. We're close to the finish line. It's time to end this. Don't bring it with you. you can't just confiscate my property. I need it to get rid of an aggressively invasive mole in this poor old man's backyard. Calm down, demolition man. Unless it's a flesh-eating mutant. One of Janus's gardeners has decided to clear a series of mole tunnels using explosives. I applaud his enthusiasm, but sadly, local police have confiscated his equipment. If you were to find it, 47, it might be the perfect way to rid the world of Janus. Mole, you don't need explosives. We're gonna keep them safe in our trunk until you produce that license, okay? Ah, come on, man. It's standard procedure. You stuff the holes, and then you blow up the tunnel system so it collapses. Look it up on YouTube. Sir, if the American police force looked to YouTube as guiding principle for standard procedure, I'm pretty sure civilization would have collapsed a long time ago. God damn it. How you been? Yeah, I can let you pass. I'm sorry, sir.
Yeah. So the other day I asked him, he asked Jamie about that time in the basement. Jamie said, Haven't you loved anything yet? How long did he talk for? Oh, can't really be sure. He zoned out eventually. It's not as bad as that time I used to be around. Interesting. Maybe you should try to spark some of those old stories, 47. Who knows what secrets Janus might reveal? Well, I've learned my lesson, that's for sure. I'm done. Great. Let me have a quick look. A bit unorthodox, maybe, but you got the job done. Let me get Mr. Janus so we can inspect it for himself. All right. Janus should be here to Mr. inspect Janus. the work soon, 47. the action of the first constant catch up with him. Death feels like an easy way out for a man like James. Still. We are close now, gentlemen. Both targets are dead. All mission objectives are completed. 47, once you've left Whittleton Creek, I will notify Providence of our discovery. In the meantime, we'll go over the clues you found. Once we've located the constant, we'll make our final move. Hey, yeah, you, you make it sound so easy. The Ark Society, one of Providence's more obscure outfits. I've heard whispers. A survivalist club for the global elite, billionaires preparing for a global collapse. And now we know the Constant will attend their next gathering. So where is it? That's the catch. The report is redacted, no names, no location. So it's a dead end. I can't track them, not without ICA backup. Now, I'm no big shot analyst, but it seems to me Janus was the Ark Society's founder, so chances are they'll want to pay their respects in private. Track the coffin. Worth a shot. You're right. 
it comes back in flashes. Fear, anger, but like it happened to someone else. <laughs> your gift and your curse, what they did to you. Well, I spent a long time feeling guilty about that. Now, I wonder who got the better deal. Yes, found something. What are we looking at? The ass end of nowhere. But this is where Janus's remains were shipped to. Our choice for a final resting place, wouldn't you say? Not bad. So we stake it out. Await the next gathering. Then we waltz in and kidnap one of the world's most powerful men. Without ICA backup. Like I said, it's a long shot. We'll take it. than I do. Get some perspective, please. Janus is dead. Lucas Gray is about to join him. And a cornered animal is twice as dangerous. Let's be perfectly clear. We were not exposed. The threat is neutralized. We are back on track. Even so, from this point on, we expect you to take- No, there is no way I'm doing that. How can you question my loyalty? In case treachery is contagious. Do you really want to do this to me? Is there a problem, Secretary? No problem whatsoever, Madam. Here's to loyalty. My man on the island confirms that the Constant has arrived. We head out at sundown. Here, in case the crew get ideas. Why are you doing this, Mr. Gray? You had a chance to walk away. Why didn't you? A year ago, I'm working security for this banker, Cobb. Only to find out he's a Providence operative. I've been running for decades, only to wind up where I started. We've all got barcodes on the back of our heads. Most people just never notice. 47 told me about your parents. How did they die? Car bomb. Sorry, 1989. Company named Blue Seed didn't care to pay for their mistakes. But I like to think no one's untouchable. I'm... I'm sorry for your loss. You feel it, don't you? Unlike him, you feel it all. Everything you've done. It's a dangerous thing, having a conscience. Attention, gentlemen. Our source on the island just made a critical discovery. The Constant has a poison chip embedded in his neck. A failsafe, in case he's compromised. Damn it. Oh, we should have expected something like this. So, we subdue the Constant before he has time to react. Not that simple. 
The device is remote triggered, and during his stay on the island, two kill switches have been entrusted to twin sisters, Zoe and Sophia Washington, two young ambitious Providence operatives and newly appointed chairwomen of the Ark Society. Apparently, even the Constant is unaware of this arrangement. Right, change of plans. We divide and conquer. 47 takes out the Washingtons while I figure out a way to get the Constant off the island. It'll be tight, but once we're back at the ship, we should be able to surgically remove the chip before the partners have time to react. 47? Tell me about the targets. I know them from the archive. Zoe and Sophia's father is president of a powerful conservative think tank. One of Providence's prime assets. The apples don't fall far from the tree. No saints either. According to ICA files, the twins are pampered socialites who get their kicks from treasure hunting. Commanding a band of trigger-happy mercenaries, Zoe and Sophia prowl the world in search for ancient relics. With little regard for local culture or even human life, they stop at nothing to claim their prize. Well, collateral damage they may be, but safe to say, they have it coming. The Isle of Scale. Headquarters of the Ark Society. Founded by Janus in 1991, the Ark Society is the world's most exclusive club. Its plutocratic members fear the downfall of civilization, and they are willing to pay huge sums to ensure their own survival. Once a year, they gather here to shop the latest survival products and to showcase new initiatives and breakthroughs. Right. These gatherings are shrouded in mystery, so we have limited intel on what to expect on the other side of the walls. The Washington Twins are hosting their first annual gathering as chairwomen of the Ark Society, and the Constant is known to attend every year. Beyond that, you're on your own. Good luck, gentlemen. I dare say you're going to need it. However, certain areas are off-limits, including the keep, which houses the members area, convention space, and council meeting. Should you wish to apply for ARC membership, please be aware that such cannot be bought, only earned. All set? Excellent. Follow me, please. Zoe Washington, one of our newly appointed chairwomen, has prepared a brand new official ceremony scheduled to take place in the upper courtyard. A stirring ode to rebirth Hello. and the enduring spirit of mankind. I believe that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Please enjoy your evening. The bar is right up ahead. Sir.
ceremony of the six days of the year. Well, you think this should be a section about the election of the year? The annual Phoenix ceremony. It symbolizes the collapse of civilization from which the Ark Society emerges unscathed and triumphant. Ah, rebirth. Interesting. Zoe Washington is going to partake in a ceremony symbolizing the downfall of civilization from which the Ark Society will emerge unscathed. Apparently, a giant phoenix-shaped effigy is set on fire with Zoe inside it. Well... I suggest you locate this master of ceremonies who lights the Fire 47. If this doesn't sound like an accident waiting to happen, I don't know what does. I get it. What's new is that the master of ceremonies will light the effigy on fire with Zoe Washington inside it. Huh. A bit showy, wouldn't you say? Hey, whatever sells. I guess you're right. Miss Zoe Washington, the name's Molly. I'm one of the custodian staff. I am sorry to call you directly, but I feel I need to warn you about the Phoenix Empire. Hey? Seriously, I'll, I'll pay you. Me? You're the man for the job. I'm a multiple Tony Award winning playwright. And famously reclusive. It's part of my brand. Never go on the spot. Besides, I do chamber plates. The spectacle. But people hate it. 
Hamilton. They won't hate it, Mr. Feniger. It's just entertainment. Entertainment? Lord, what have I done? Did I let it talk me into this? Should I tell Miss Washington that you won't be going on stage? Everyone's waiting for you. God, no. No, she frightens me. Just, uh... Just, just give me a moment to control the nerves. All right, Mr. Penninger. Break away. Excellent. The crowd was starting to get restless. The peers are waiting by the stage, and the torch is ready by the money pit. Handsome pledge, and yet a drop in the ocean. Zoe Washington, the Ark Society recognizes you as our Founder's rightful successor, our inspiration, our guiding light, the custodian of our future. Excellent work, 47. Enjoy the spotlight. Patrons of the Ark Society, you are part of a select, chosen few. Our founder, Janus, showed us how to survive. But survival is not enough. We must live, and we must soar. The Ark Society must not only commit itself to survival, but to progress, be it our next home in the stars or the next step in human evolution. This is the eternal purpose of the elite. Not just to lead, but to lead from the front. When the time comes, and all comes tumbling down, when mankind retreats once more into caves of superstition, we will keep the fire alight. We will be the torchbearers, the trailblazers and pioneers. Do, do not feel guilty for your privilege. Be proud. Be fearless. For the future is ours to shape. Right. Uh, hello, sir. Oh, hello, sir. Excuse me. Look at you, Feniger. All dressed to kill. Now, let's do this thing. Light her up. As the world burns, we rise. 
rise from its ashes. Not just to survive, but to live. That's him. The Constant. Providence's top controller. Everything depends on capturing him alive. Council still in session? No, they've called a recess. Sophia Washington wants them to pass some kind of motion, but one of the council members is fighting her tooth and nail. Huh. Wouldn't happen to be Jebediah Block, the coal baron, would it? Yeah. How do you know? Well, I happen to know he's on the council. So, Sophia Washington has called a council meeting between the original five members of the Ark Society. Sophia hopes to pass some sort of motion, but she faces stark opposition from ultra-conservative coal baron Jebediah Block. Hmm. I suggest you find Mr. Block while the council is still in recess, 47. I suspect the headstrong Sophia will not take kindly to dissidents and troublemakers. One of the original five, you know, the first people to fund the Ark Society back in 91. Plus, I just walked in on Sophia Washington screaming Block's name while beating up a pillow cushion. Oh, she was properly pissed. Jeez, must mean a lot to her. What's it about? What am I, paparazzi? I just work for these assholes. Same as you. Well, keep me posted, in case teeth start flying. Can do. Kronstadt designer. So sorry, Master. I cannot let you back. Sure. What did he do? I don't know. But she seemed real interested in this invention of his. Something called a kill switch. Kill switch? Sounds ominous. Well, whatever it is she's plotting, he did not want to be part of it. But an order's an order. <laughs> Guess we've all been down that road. <laughs> Poor bastard. Well, that's what you get for inventing kill switches, I suppose. Good evening to you. So, brain uploads, huh? Living forever is a string of code. Yeah, I'm not doing that. 
Not in a million years. What did they offer you? For your services in New York? Level 5 bunker in the small bar. Mm -hmm. Hey, would you mind? Check it out. Urban five bunker in the small bar facility. You're kidding. Good I'm afternoon, sir. And no offense, but I'm like uh. Mr. Block, you're not troubled. I know you. You're James. I'm a friend of the Ark Society. If I may be so bold, I heard about your predicament, and, well, I believe I may offer a fresh perspective. Why not? All right. Say it when your dust collapse. Weather goes haywire, the balls melt, and the Ark Society heads off to a comfortable Arctic sanctuary, while the rest of civilization falls into chaos. Well, just sounds to me no more needy asshole. Well, you do realize what kind of place it would be, right? What are you talking about? A hundred or so people. No market, no economy, no social structures. It will be like a space colony. Everyone equal and dependent on each other. It will be egalitarian, sir. It will be... Well, communist. Well, that's what I paid almost two billion for. Why didn't anyone tell me so? Merely food for thought, Mr. Block. Good night. I, I need to. Uh, thank you. Sure. Our parents were afraid of the missiles. But I think we both know that if it happens, they'll be some other death play. Something even we can't predict. Okay, I hear you. You're but looking well, sir. I'm not talking about major cities. Think fault lines here. 
Geological bullseyes. Miss Washington, after due consideration, I have revised my position. I would like to support your motion. Well, well, look at you, Block. Finding your good sense and manners. Come along, then. I'll call a vote at once. I knew you'd come around. You're stubborn, Block. But you're not a schmuck. You know I'm right. The analysts of my father's think tank have been grinding the data for months, and they are rarely wrong. The Karuna Agreement, climate litigation. We estimate that fossil fuel companies like yours have a decade, at best, before you're all resigned to the junkyard of history. And what kind of secret society would we be if we didn't keep each other in power? What indeed? I knew we could talk sense. Just vote in favor of my motion, and I promise you, Block, you'll power the world for decades to come. Well, who cares how, as long as you're the one getting paid. Ain't that the truth? Friends and founders, the recess is over. Let's return to the council room and proceed with the vote. You've certainly placed yourself at the crossroads of history. Nicely done, 47. Let's reiterate. For decades, you, the titans of the energy industry, have conspired to obscure the truth about climate change through lobbying, misinformation, and propaganda. This strategy has been incredibly successful. But all good things must come to an end. It is time for you to adapt or die, ladies and gentlemen. This is why our analysts have devised a 10-year transition plan to keep you in power. Play this right, and you will not only thrive, but this time, you will be the good guys. In other words, you have nothing to lose. So, everyone in favor, say I. 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 Yay or nay, Block? Silence is consent. Nay. Excuse me? You heard me. Nay. Oh, for the love of. Ugh, idiot. Son of a. Blocked. You stupid. Ugh. That's. Four eyes. And one nay. Jebediah Block vetoes the motion. This council is adjourned until further notice. Block. A word? Upstairs. Right away, please. Just looking out for number one. Don't be an idiot. There's no future in coal, Block. You have one choice. Go green or go extinct. Now, personally, I don't give a shit if you go the way of the Dodo, but you are one of the Ark Society's biggest contributors. We'd hate to lose your business. Besides, 
If terrestrial cold goes under, who will pay for your children's survival? Your grandkids. After all, nobody says disaster will strike in our lifetime. You have a moral duty to stay rich, Block. Nice try, but I don't have grandchildren. You just had to make this difficult, didn't you? Here's the deal, Block. My family and I, we serve a group of powerful individuals who prefer to stay anonymous. Letting the climate go to hell in a handbasket has served their interests well, but only up to a point. You see, they are sitting on some patents that'll knock your socks off. Weather control systems, recycling pollution as fuel, cold fusion, you name it. And they plan to make trillions protecting the world from the very threat they worked so hard to create. But to do so, they need you guys to quite literally stop fighting windmills. Huh. The truth at last. And what's in it for Jebediah Block? Gentlemen, please give me and Mr. Block a moment. I offered you a carrot. Now, here's the stick. We know about Montana. Mine collapse in 2015. It would be a shame if the American public got wind of your somewhat creative approach to safety regulations. No! Both targets down. Impressive work, 47. And now to confront the constant. Mr. Gray, what's your status? I'm at the helicopter, but the place is crawling with security. 47, you better bring the Constant to one of the boats in the harbor where it's quiet. You can use the kill switch to coerce him. Washingtons are dead. I have the kill switch. What did you say? How could you know about that? You will head towards the harbor. No sudden moves. No signs or warnings. I will trigger the device if I need to. I know you. The boy in the picture. You have his eyes. You're Burnwood's assassin. Move. Partners no more, I take it. I had a notion something didn't sit right with my mentor's betrayal. You murdered him, I take it, to get to me. Not just that. He had it coming. Interesting. It was my impression that you were cured of such sentiment. The good doctor built his serum specifically to target the seats of your emotions. Has Miss Burnwood's sense of justice rubbed off on you, I wonder? Just keep walking. For what it's worth, Janus always found Ortmeier's project distasteful, not to mention inefficient. But alas, sometimes you have to play the hand you're dealt. Oh, I know. Climate change. Sophia Washington is trying to persuade Janus's original five to embrace the Green Revolution. That chant. The original five are all.
Ça. I take it this is not an ICA sanctioned operation. What exactly does Miss Burnwood plan to achieve by targeting her clients? Violating her own code? She's doing it for us. Us? I have been planning the Founders Week oh, for over a month. Oh, I, I should have known. How does a man leave no trace? By not existing in the first place. Lucas Gray. Or was it Subject 6? He died when the Institute went up in flames, but no body was ever produced. And unlike you, his rage never faded. So, now you want the partners, the men behind the curtain who have caused you all this pain? Well, before you go knocking down a wall, you better make sure it's not load-bearing. Enough talking. You'll do plenty of that later. We're here. Get on the boat. Mr. Edwards, still think this is maintenance. Oh, Miss Burnwood, what have you done? Changing horses midstream? Truly unprofessional. You know what we want. Where is the carrot? No carrot. You're useless to the partners. Compromised. Even if we let you live, you can never return. Why die protecting them? When I can drag them down with me. It's a bad hand, but it's all you've got. Three families. That's all it took. The Ingrams, the Carlyles, the Stuyvesants. 
Three dynasties secretly pooling their resources over generations, creating a singularity so dense that nothing escapes its gravity. Never heard of them. Well, they've heard of you. In fact, you just became the top of their agenda. Go. We can't give them time to retaliate. Don't take your eyes off him. Be careful. Well, here we are again. I must admit I am disappointed, Miss Burnwood. I had such big plans for you. Save it. I know the truth now. You're outplayed. You have nothing left to bargain with. <laughs> you were so certain. So sure of the people closest to you. He never fails, does he? He never misses his mark. You found a window into his past. And yet... Something else remains hidden. A simple truth you learned long ago. Diana! Coming! No one, Miss Burnwood, is untouchable. Three families, that's all it took. The Ingrams, the Carlyles, the Stuyvesants. Tell us everything about them. The ivory towers are about to fall. And when we're done... Let's cross that bridge when we get to it. For now, the partners are all that matter. There's an issue. Of course there is. Olivia's tracked the names mentioned by the Constant, and they're dead ends. How dead? Obituaries for all three have appeared online. Accidental death, heart failure, lung cancer. They're covering their tracks. Faster than I thought. A contingency plan of sorts. The Constant wasn't aware of it. Well, it seems they didn't tell him everything after all. Something this big will leave traces behind. Constant says to follow the money. Milton Fitzpatrick, the investment bank. It's a key Providence asset. Which you worked for. The director of the New York branch is a Providence operative. It's our best bet as a way in. I'll tell the pilot to turn the plane around. Right, gentlemen. Here's what we've come up with. The partners are transitioning between identities. But everything is so recent, the Milton Fitzpatrick bank records will still be intact. We've confirmed that the partners have active accounts there. However, the bank's records are remotely updated on a frequent basis. We may only have hours before any leads that could get us the new identities of the partners are gone forever. The data we need can be obtained in two ways. The bank's data core can be accessed through the basement vault, but getting inside the vault could be challenging. Alternatively, Bank Director Athena Savalas, Head of Security Mateo Perez, and Head of Accounts Fabian Mann each carry a partial backup drive with the data. We'll need all three drives to get the full data. Now, we cannot risk the partners discovering the data breach. Eliminating the Bank's Director, Athena Savalas, would sever the last remaining Providence tie to the Bank and keep our activities hidden. Okay, one more time. 
we break into the vault, extract the hard drive rack, and eliminate the director on the way out. We. You. Good luck, 47. Welcome to New York, 47. The Milton Fitzpatrick Bank is open for business, but it seems there's some sort of investigation underway. Expect increased security. Your target, Director Athena Savalas, can be found in her top floor office, overlooking the iconic Teller Hall. Head of security, Mateo Perez, is roaming between the vault area and the Teller Hall, talking to employees. And head of accounts, Fabian Mann, can be found on the investment banker floor and the top floor of the bank, driving the internal investigation. Remember, we need to secure the data from the bank's reinforced vault, or, alternatively, acquire three hard drives carried by the director and her two lieutenants, Mann and Perez. Good luck, 47. Just a quick pat down, sir. Nothing to worry about. Good. You're clean and good to go. Hi, it's me. Yeah, it went really well. I think it was me. I was calm and talking. I mean, there is a guy in the bathroom taking his pants out of the house. Oh, have we talked to everyone? No, I think I saw him go into the bathrooms. He's been there for ages. Okay, doesn't sound promising. Milton Fitzpatrick is holding a round of job interviews. The final applicant was last seen going into the bathrooms where he's been for some time. Nerves, maybe? Yeah, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Let me know when he comes out. Will do. Thanks. Good afternoon. If you're here for the job interview, please take a seat. Feeling better, I hope. Should I let HR know you're ready for the final interview? I feel like a new man. I'm ready. Wonderful. Follow me, please. It's right down here. Best of luck in your interview, 47. Let's see where this will lead you to. Nervous? Don't worry. You'll do fine. So, Matt, any news on your end? My squad's working hard in there so far. Mr. Thomas, have a seat, please. Ah, Mr. Thomas, good to meet you. I'm Kevin, and this is Melissa. 
We're both with HR, and we will be guiding you through this last test. It's important to stress that there's no pass or fail here. It's merely a standard personality test meant to gauge how you'll fit into our corporate culture. All right. If you're ready, let's kick this off, okay? I'm ready. Okay, so this is a very simple test. All you do is pick a card and tell us what you see there. Now, it's important to point out that there are no right or wrong answers here. It's just to give us a better impression of who you are on a psychological level. Does that make sense? Yes, I'm ready. All right, Mr. Thomas, uh, let's proceed then. If you will, please pick the card that most conjures up the word opportunity. This one. All right, now look at it closely. Take a few moments, then tell me, do you see an animal or an object? Animal. I see. What kind of animal? A bird. An eagle, perhaps. An eagle. Very interesting. A forceful animal. Anything else? It's feeding on something. Feeding? On what? A carcass. The scene is reflected in a pool of blood flowing from the body. It's a vulture feeding on someone else's kill. That's very graphic, Mr. Thomas. Yes. Brutal, even. Right. Mm, very interesting observation, Mr. Thomas. Not what we expected, but, but that's perfectly fine. Let's take the next one, shall we? Pick any of the remaining cards that make you think of execution, please. I'll pick this one. Good choice. Tell me, what is the first thing you see here? Just the very first thing that comes to mind. I see a figure in a large coat. Perspective skewed, as if I'm looking at him from the ground. He's got something in his hands. I, uh, go on. He's armed. Dual firearms. Large caliber pistols. I see. What else do you see? He's just finished a job. Perfectly executed. And who is this man? It's me. Very, very interesting, Mr. Thomas. Well, that's a very creative interpretation, Mr. Thomas. Uh, I think we've just got time for the last card. Please proceed. Oh, uh, this last card should hopefully make you think of prosperity. Okay. Ah, oh, very good. This is an interesting one. What do you see here? Take in the whole image, please, and in as much detail as possible, tell me what this reminds you of. Wealth. Hmm. Can you elaborate on that? I see a big pile of money earned performing questionable actions. And how do you feel about that? bending the rules of the game. It's what I do. Very good, Mr. Thomas. Well, I have to say, that was very impressive, Mr. Thomas. With your cutthroat approach and killer instinct, I think you'll fit right in with Milton Fitzpatrick. Wouldn't you say so, Melissa? I couldn't agree more, Kevin. Mr. Thomas, allow me to congratulate you on your new position as an investment banker here at Milton Fitzpatrick. Thank you. When do I start? <laughs> well, aren't you an eager beaver? Well, we expect you to come in tomorrow at 8. Welcome on board, Mr. Thomas. You know what? If you want, feel free to have a look around the bank. You've got clearance all the way to the top. Get to know the place. Just don't go into the CEO's office. We don't want to lose you on your first day. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure you can see yourself out, Mr. Thomas. Have a nice day. One of the investment bankers at Milton Fitzpatrick is facing termination. He's got a private meeting with Director Savalis and has been told to register at the top floor reception. Well, terminations are your specialty, 47. Well. understand the task and why I hit every quarter they threw at me. 
How how could she do this? I can't be fired. Yeah, hey, so. Please come to the director's office. I feel like giving that bit woman a piece of my mind. I gave this place everything. Yeah, I don't feel so good. Huh? Okay. Sir, if you want to come through, I'm gonna have to pat you down. This will just take a sec, sir. All right. Good job, sir. Thank you. I'm here for a meeting with Director Savalas. I don't think it... Oh. Yes, of course. That's right, go inside. Thank you. Mr. Jackson, have a seat, please. Thank you. 
Mr. Jackson, as you must be aware, we've been running some numbers internally to measure the flexibility and productivity of people working here at the bank. Work hours, output versus input, sales portfolios, late nights and early mornings, things like that. I've been reviewing personnel files for the past few weeks, and a couple of files stood out. Yours, for instance. Is that so? I have quite specific expectations when it comes to my employees. How you appear and act reflects directly on me and this building. And, well, you've certainly managed to stand out, Mr. Jackson. Tell me, do you knit those sweaters yourself? Or does your wife do that? A man needs a hobby, Miss Savalas. Guard, leave the room. I need a moment alone with Mr. Jackson here. <laughs> So, Mr. Jackson, I'm pleased to inform you that you will be able to explore your hobbies in even greater detail in the near future. Don't get up. I'm not done yet. So, Mr. Jackson, I'm pleased to inform you that you will be able to explore your hobbies in even greater detail in the near future. We're letting you go, Mr. Jackson. The bank appreciates your contributions over the years, but we feel it's probably best to part ways at this time. This may upset you, but let me assure you that eventually you will come to embrace this point in your life as an opportunity. This is not my first termination, Miss Savalas. Ah. Uh, somehow, I'm not surprised. HR will send you all the relevant papers, Mr. Jackson. Please gather your things as soon as you can. Good day, Mr. Jackson. That's the first backup data disk secured. Two more to locate. Good today, sir. Sir, I will have to check you if you want to pass, okay? Just relax. You'll be on your way in a sec. Good. You're clean and good to go. This is the vault, 47. The data core should be behind that large steel door. The head of security suspects there may have been some tampering going on here. But I need my things in there. Done before closing time. Again, I'm really sorry, but Fred keeps coming down here. I'm not taking any chances if I let you in. But he's not here now, and the camera looks broken. Who's gonna know? Sorry, not on my watch, man. Talk to Perez side. He won't know when he finds the way Come on.
Uh, How does this thing work? Go here or there. Terminate. Not as bad as that time in Queens. Remember that? Oh, the 6,000 semi incinerated files we had to keep together? Don't remind me. Glad you're on our side. Great work, 47. You now have access to the vault. Good work, 47. That's the evidence secured for now. Careful not to lose it. If anyone sees you with that rack, my guess is you'll draw a lot of unwanted attention to yourself. That's the last objective completed. Exfiltrate the bank, 47. Miss Hall will want to have a close look at that data. Olivia has found something interesting. I'll tell you on the way. Where are we going? To paradise, 47.
So, this is paradise. If you can afford. Gentlemen, glad to hear you made it out of New York. Where are we? Olivia decrypted the Data 47 recovered from the bank. We isolated three transactions from Providence partner accounts. All made out to Haven, a small corporation operating out of the Maldives. And what does Haven do? To the public, they specialize in reputation management for the rich and famous. The real money, however, comes from the covert reconstruction of identities for wealthy criminals. They make people disappear. The partners are using Haven to acquire new identities. Yes. Olivia's been attempting to hack the Haven servers, but the owners of Haven are manually resetting the access keys every 10 hours. That unfortunately, makes them targets. Haven Island is a true tropical paradise. Owned by the company's founder, Tyson Williams, the island is used by Haven as a combined headquarters and client entertainment center. Current and potential clients are ferried to the island and treated to the very best the Maldives have to offer. Michelin star chefs, a full massage spa, private huts, exercise facilities, and all the comforts of a luxury island resort are made available to them. 47, we'll be sending you in as a potential new client. We've put together a convincing cover story. You're Mr. Reaper, a thief for hire looking to disappear for a while. Your mission on the island is simple. You need to eliminate the three owners of Haven. Tyson Williams, founder and rumored tyrannical CEO of Haven. Ludmilla Vitrova, a former confidence artist hired by Williams to serve as a client recruiter and handler. And Stephen Bradley, technical wizard and the brains behind Haven's proprietary software platform. With the owners gone, Olivia will be able to penetrate the Haven servers long enough for her to secure the new partner identities. I've uploaded all the information we have on the island and the three targets. Best of luck, gentlemen. Hmm. I don't rely on luck. Well, a little wouldn't hurt. Welcome to the Maldives, 47. The Haven Island staff is ready to receive you under your assumed identity as Tobias Reaper, a professional thief looking to retire from a life of crime. Ludmilla Vitrova can be found in the public sections of the island, primarily tending to client needs. Stephen Bradley alternates between looking after a strict training regimen and working on a small private island. While Tyson Williams roams his large villa estate at the back of the island. This is it, 47. Eliminating the three owners of Haven should buy Miss Hall the time needed to do a full penetration and retrieval of the Providence partner data. Best of luck, 47.
wonderful, Doctor. I'm sure Mr. Williams appreciates your visit. See you and your, um, assistant in the pool bar later on. Pamela, it's me. You're never gonna guess where I am. Yes, he did. I'm here now. It's amazing. He's apparently got to do his doctor thing here, meet up with some patient called Tyson Williams over at this big villa on the other end of the island. On the other... Tyson Williams has summoned a doctor to the island. He must be feeling under the weather. You have some experience with pain relief, 47. Maybe you could be of assistance? And of the island. I can't believe I'm saying that. It's so nice here. Me? Oh, I'm just gonna chill in the sun, drinking mimosas until I pass out. And, you know, spend the time making sense. Forget all about that thing to be at your wife. Oh, you bet I am. Over the next few days, I plan on going for the next What's this? Dust? Didn't they clean this place at all? Ah, the doctor, right? Mr. Williams is expecting you. Uh, he's in the house. But, uh, sorry, I, I gotta, I gotta frisk you first, I'm afraid. Yeah, let me take a look. Just like the movies, right? Okay, you're all fine. Off you go. I'm the doctor. Yes, well, I guessed as much. Follow me to Mr. Williams's room, please, and don't touch anything. We're cleaning the house today. Excellent, 47. I hope you can offer the man some assistance. Please wait here, Doctor. I'm sure Mr. Williams will be along shortly. You're not Dr. Singh. Who the hell are you? Dr. Singh is tired. Long night. He asked me to fill in. I knew I shouldn't have allowed him to bring that mistress of his here. I'm running a bad 
bad fever here, Doc. Burning up. I can't go outside. I can hardly stay inside. It started about ten days ago. Singh gave me those pills over there, but they aren't helping. They just give me a migraine. I think I need something stronger here, Doc. Remove your robe, please. I want to check your breathing. So, you're running a fever, Mr. Williams? Yeah, like I said. More than a week now, but the worst thing is a headache. Bad migraine, Doc. The light therapy doesn't help me a lot. What can you do for me? Let's have a quick look at you before we do anything <coughs> drastic, Mr. Williams. Fine, fine. Cough, please. Look, tell it to me straight, Doc. Is it bad? I got some very serious business to attend to and I really don't have time for this shit. We'll be done soon. Turn around for me. <coughs> oh, hell! Can't you do anything to strangle this cough, Doc? I have a few ideas, Mr. Williams. Tyson Williams eliminated. Excellent work, 47. Two targets remaining. Stephen Bradley guy? How is he even allowed to work here? Well, I'm afraid it's gonna be hard to fire him. He's Haven's chief software engineer and one of the owners. He almost killed us! The boat is still out there in the water, sunk! I could have been in there, and all because he wanted to show off on that water scooter of his. What an absolute ass! Yeah, he's not going out again. So, Stephen Bradley likes to go on water scooters but is unable to go out because the scuba instructor confiscated his keys. Shame. Those things are very accident-prone. No, the scuba instructor grabbed his keys and won't give them back to him. I overheard them talking while looking at the gear. Good. Weird. Steve J. Hey, Steve J. Dude. Great, great, great. Steven, 
I'm sort of in the middle of handling clients here. What can I do for you? CJ, just give me the damn keys for the water scooter, all right? I need to vent my brain, and that requires speed. Nope. Talk to your boss if you want. He told me to guard them with my life, and that's what I'm doing. Tyson isn't my boss. He's my business partner. Hell, I'm more valuable to this company than he is, so I hand him over. Can't do it. You're not in the right emotional state for this sort of activity. Mm -hmm. Go do some yoga first or something. Then talk to Williams, then get back to me. Bah! If I hadn't lost my own damn keys, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. Oh, what's wrong with me? Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be sick. Good Mr. Day, Bradley, sir. are these yours? Dude, I've been looking everywhere for those. You just made my day. I am gonna tear the sea a new one. Thanks, buddy. My pleasure. All right, let's see how well Mr. Bradley controls that water scooter of his. This is gonna be good! 
So, that's Stephen Bradley taken care of. Well done. Just one more target to go.
That's all we need to do from here. Miss Hall should be able to extract the information needed from the Haven servers. Good work, 47. Good work, 47. Ludmilla Vitrova has been permanently retired. <laughs>